Hello, I am Valery Sushkov, and um, this presentation is about root conflict analysis, a method which has been developed uh, for analyzing of problems which we might call as inventive or innovative. Um, well, I have over 30 years of professional experience with helping hundreds of organizations uh, to become successful with uh, systematic innovation. And uh, I've been working with uh, TURIS, which is, if you are not familiar with what it is, uh, stands for uh, Theory of Solving Inventive Problems. Well, also, it is a theory, but in fact, it's a large toolbox of tools which support one or another part of um, a process of producing inventive and innovative ideas. Uh, well, there is not much literature describing RC+, uh, and uh, by numerous requests, I decided to make this uh, video recording in which um, I will explain you uh, what RC Plus is and what are the key concepts behind RC Plus, where and when it is used, and I'll show you some examples of application of RC Plus. So let's start. First of all, if we look back 30 or 40 years ago, the innovation process. Uh, was rather chaotic and random at that time. We didn't click, have clear processes uh, how to deal with situations where we needed to invent or innovate. And as practice shows, uh, when I'm asked, when I'm asked uh, uh, why one innovation is better than another one, well, I always answer, I always ask, ask, well, <laughs> uh, Okay, you showed me a beautiful device, for example, or a beautiful new gadget, or improved gadget, or a new generation of some technical system, uh, or a new concept of a business system, let's say business model. And I always ask, okay, what problem is solved by this solution? Is there any problem solved? And you know what, that uh, in many cases, I don't hear a clear answer. Uh, not far ago, in a business insider, I saw information about statistics, why many startup fails. And uh, despite the usual opinion that they uh, fail due to the lack of money or they burn their money too fast, the main reason was rather different. Main reason was 42% of startups fail because they do not address properly market needs. Actually, they come up with some ideas which look to be great, but in fact, these ideas are worthless. Um, that's why today we uh, have a process. Uh, the situation has changed quite a bit, and rather than just coachly think, okay, what new can we offer to customers? Uh, how we can improve our uh, products and technologies? Or... Uh, how we can bring new generations of products, for example. We carefully study what our market needs. We identify what are shortcomings, which are drawbacks, what are problems on the market. And then we set up a process, which usually consists of six steps as shown on the screen. First step, that would be situation analysis. It is understanding what we want to do. It is choosing where we're going to address the market needs by transforming the addressing of market needs to clear problem definitions. Next step, we, once we know what problem to solve, we start analyzing this problem by its decomposition because any problem actually has some problems inside, especially when we speak about inventive or innovative problems. Well, uh, Maybe now I have to say a few words about what we mean with inventive or innovative problem. Well, inventive or innovative problem 
uh, emerges when there is something that does not satisfy us. Uh, us, I mean, of course, uh, customers, manufacturers, doesn't matter. Uh, we know that we want to change something. And perhaps we know how to do it. But there are certain constraints which do not let us to produce the needed change. So simply speaking, we know how, but we can't. And no of known solutions actually work. In this case, we have to go out of the box. We have to come up with innovative concept or innovative idea. And we definitely don't want to spend too much money, too much effort on bringing this idea to the market. So we are looking for as most ideal solutions as possible. Uh, so once we identified uh, what the problem is, once we decompose the problem into many sub-problems, we are looking at the key sub-problem. What, what is a problem which creates all the troubles? And from the other hand, which sub-problem will be most easy to solve? Innovative problem or inventive problem is also called open-ended problem. Uh, as opposite to mathematical problems or standard engineering problems, we cannot solve such problems by optimization. We can have almost infinite number of solutions. Well, let's imagine the situation. You have a desktop cooling fan. Well, it is good because it refreshes you, uh, especially when it's hot in the room. But there is one problem. This cooling fan produces too much noise. How are you going to solve this problem? Are you going to put some earplugs uh, in your ears? Or you are going to redesign the motor so it stops creating less noise? Or maybe you can move your um, cooling fan to the far away from you in a uh, further corner of room. Uh, so, okay, it maybe its efficiency will drop, but at the same time, the noise will be lower. So you see, there are many different ways to solve this problem. And um, this is a very important part of the process to identify where exactly you want to solve your problem. Once you identified your key sub-problem, then you can use tools to come up with ideas. Well, maybe not using tools because as you know that the most uh, broadly used way of producing new inventive ideas is a brainstorm. Brainstorm has been there for over 100 years to support creative ideas generation. But today, the situation is different. We use systematic methods, knowledge-based methods, to come up with new ideas by actually uh, transferring experience from other areas to our area. And trees is one of the uh, methods to do that. And finally, we have two stages where we after we generated ideas, we structure them and evaluate and landscape. Well, if you look at the innovative process with trees, each of these parts of this, each stage of these six stages is supported with relevant tools. There are a number of tools for the first stage where we uh, try to understand the situation. We can use perception mapping, innovation situation questionnaire. We can use function analysis. And there are more tools in trees, for example, flow analysis and so forth. Um, there is a, uh, a, actually the part or stage where you create ideas is also supported quite well. It's been a focus, a core uh, part of trees, problem solving tools. And of course, we have uh, rather developed methods for ideas evaluation, structuring, filtering, and selection. But the second part uh, has so far was not developed rather well. When you move from an identified general problem to find this particular key problem or sub problem that you are going to solve. Um, to decompose, to understand problem, there have been a number of methods. And these methods are also, many of them, almost 100 years old. All these methods are based on a common approach analysis of chains of cause and effect relationships. And they have a goal, extract a cause of a problem. Which means that once we know what is the cause of the problem, we can eliminate it. 
uh, one of the first methods um, which belong to the group of these uh, two uh, methods, one of the first methods which belong to this group is so-called 5Y methods. Uh, this method was invented in 1930, so it's almost 100 years old. The idea of this method is rather simple. You know what a problem is? You ask question why five times. So, the cooling fan produced too much noise. Why? Uh, because the air is moving with a high speed. Why? Because the blades of the cooling fan push the air. Why? Well, because the blades move and so forth until we ask five times. And basically, if I ask, if I say that blades move, it's already uh, the fifth time in the list. So now I have uh, my problem, a source of my problem. The blades move. So I need to eliminate the blades and the problem will be solved. But you see, and that's a big difference between a standard problem and open-ended problems. Because in trying to solve open-ended or inventive problem, I often face, or we often face a situation when we identify a cause, but we cannot eliminate it. Because this cause is also used to produce some positive effect. The moving air does not only produce a negative effect, it also produces positive effect. So you don't want to eliminate the blades, because they also contribute in creating positive effect too. Um, one, uh, the, 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 another method, which has been also since 1950s, is called root cause analysis, which is similar to for five wives, it just creates a tree. Um, another variant of this method, which was developed in 1960, it's called fault tree analysis. We know uh, what fault happens, but, and then we start again creating a tree of causes, and this method, first, first, which introduces and and or logical gates, so we can see if causes um, are dependent on each other or independent. Um, another approach was developed in Japan by Dr. Ishikawa, and this approach is known today as Ishikawa diagram, or it's also known as a fishbone diagram. Um, this is also a tree, but where the categories in the tree are predefined. This method was um, developed to improve quality and became a part of a total quality management system. And um, uh, again, you identify categories of different causes that might lead to uh, lower quality uh, than expected. Another group of methods, which are not trees, where because in, other, in the methods which I listed, you always go top down, is the diagram of connections. It's uh, where you put um, uh, different effects in a random order, but then starts connecting them with links. So that's something that reminds a mind map. But uh, the links are not just uh, con uh, connections between the concepts, but in this case, links are causal connections, which show which effect follows which. Uh, with this method, there are also some uh, tools developed for inventive analysis, inventive problem analysis, like a problem perception mapping, or a company ideation problem formulaire, and so forth. Uh, recently, uh, relatively recent methods are cause and, cause, effect and chain, cause and effect chain analysis, developed by the US company Gentries, um, which um, is rather similar to the methods which I am going to tell you about today, RCA Plus, and you can consider it as a cause and effect chain analysis as a uh, previous generation of RCA Plus. Also today, both methods, cause and effect chain analysis and RCA Plus, are used uh, by different uh, um, companies and uh, uh, users uh, independently. And the last method which I want to mention, which produced uh, a very good, um, uh, uh, produced a very uh, important, um, I would say, meaning for me was theory of constraints. This method was developed by Eliyahu Goldratt uh, in the 90s, 
uh, 1990s, 1980s, 1990s. And this method was um, designed to identify bottlenecks in business systems. So the idea of this method was that if the business performance is not as high as expected, there is one, at least one bottleneck which uh, creates, which uh, drastically uh, drops the business performance of the entire business system, such as a company, for example. Um, theory of constraints influenced a lot on me, and uh, I took the ideas from uh, theory of constraints, and especially from one of its uh, sub-methods, current reality tree, it's called, to create RCA plus diagrams, to create RCA plus method. So, um, actually, there are more than a couple of dozens of tools developed uh, based on the uh, cause and effect analysis. And uh, most of the disadvantages of this tool, first, it is focused on search in depth. Why do I say that it's a disadvantage? Well, the, it is a disadvantage when you want to find a good ideal solution, solution with the highest ratio uh, value costs. Because when you move deeper and deeper and deeper to the causes of a problem, you move deeper to the fundamental levels of creating the problem. So that means that if you want to eliminate the cause, you might need to eliminate a fundamental cause, which might be totally impossible, or you will have to produce too many changes to, to, to achieve your goal. So later I will tell more about it in the presentation why it is not that important to look in depth as to look in breadth. Um, also, I noticed many times um, by looking at the result of previous works at my customer companies, which used standard or old methods for analysis, like root cause analysis or five whys, uh, or connection diagrams, that often these diagrams look like uh, they are impossible to read. They might have some boxes in which there is one word, and uh, as an outsider, I do not understand what they meant. So this is important to identify and how the causes are formulated. Next disadvantage is not clear when to stop. Well, in five wise method is very clear. You ask why five times and stop. But then again, well, we stopped with uh, the cause that the blades are moving. So what? Well, we can go down and ask why they're moving and so forth. And maybe we can come up with something more interesting. Um, one of the advantage, disadvantages which I would like to stress on is an effective search for horizontal causes. Because very often the problems, negative effects, undesired effects, are created not by one cause, by a number of causes which act together. And exploring and identifying as many as possible of such causes actually brings us to understanding and seeing more resources which can be used later to solve problems. Uh, also, once you've done five eyes and you identify the cause, well, you don't know what to do next. Well, there is no connection with problem-solving tools. Well, and finally, what to do if a cost cannot be eliminated or may not be eliminated? The RC uh, methods, root cause analysis based on um, classical approach, they do not answer this question. That's why RCA plus a root conflict analysis was developed. It is a method and a tool of cause and effect analysis Design first to extract and structure problem causes which contribute to problem, and second to identify conflicts which create barriers for eliminating the causes. Before I start explaining RCA Plus, I just will mention that uh, although RCA Plus was designed for um, technical um, systems, uh, its area of application is universal. Um, most often it is used in technology, of course, engineering today, but um, lately it can be, it has been very 
successfully used in business, management, and even in social areas. Well, at this slide, I just give you a few examples of um, our customer companies. First from engineering, NXP, that's a former Philips Semiconductors, a company which produces uh, um, uh, electronic uh, devices. Well, PSA, Peugeot, Citroën, concer Concern, Automotive Concern, Unilever, um, a company which produces uh, packed fruit products. Well, they have a large variety of different uh, products, uh, including ice cream, teas, uh, olive oils, uh, mix, baking mixes, and so forth. I'm sure that most of you know this company and its products. Um, well, for example, one of the problems that we were solving at Unilever was how to make ice cream more healthy. But, well, you know that ice cream is uh, not healthy because it has too much sugar, too much fat. So eliminate sugar. You cannot eliminate sugar. If you eliminate sugar or you eliminate fat, your ice cream will freeze like a piece of ice. So the problem was how to make ice cream more healthy while preserving its taste, its texture, and so forth. Um, other companies like a large Dutch consortium for um, innovation, which is called TNO, DSM, Chemical Concern, Pentair, which produced uh, liquid fluid filtration systems. Uh, so that's, if you go to a brewery, a beer brewery, you will definitely see such uh, such installations, such systems. Well, of course, Pentair is not the only company doing that. But also there are a few companies I can mention. Um, it is PricewaterhouseCoopers, for example, where the problem was that uh, how to improve the effectiveness of their recruitment system. Two banks, uh, mobile operator, Orange, Acme, it's a cooperation of insurers. And you also can see two software companies one is gaming company and another is Microsoft. You know what it is. Uh, but what is interesting at both these companies, well, there are more software companies on the list of our customers. But at these companies, we didn't use um, RCA Plus to solve product related or software related pro programs, but business and management problems. And now let us have a look at the essence of RCA Plus method. In fact, the approach which is used in RCA Plus uh, first was developed for a totally different reason. Um, it was developed to help people who learn trees to learn how to formulate contradictions. A contradiction is a key concept in trees. Uh, usually a contradiction emerges where you have where you want to improve one parameter or a feature of your system or your process. And, while, and when you start doing it with a well non-inventive method, with an already existing solution, something else gets worse or something else degrades. Well, for example, well, I have this uh, bottle with water. And if I want to carry it with me, well, I want to have a plenty of water for whatever reason. But carrying plenty of water means that I will need a bigger bottle, and as a result, it will be very heavy to carry. So you see, there is a conflict. The bottle should be small, so I can carry uh, it effortlessly, because it will have a low weight. And on the other hand, the bottle should be big uh, or large, big, big, then it can have a big cap cap capacity and uh, I will have a plenty of water with me. So you see, there is a conflict, actually a contradiction. A bottle should be small and a bottle should be big. That's a contradiction because these two things may not exist each other. And um, some trees techniques operate not with directly contradictions, but also with conflicts which are on top of them. Like I say, if the bottle is small, then it is easier to carry, but it has low capacity or I will have less water with me, which is not good. And it seems like it's rather easy to formulate, but um, I found that even 
and experienced uh, trees uh, practitioners sometimes made mistakes in formulating contradictions properly. So I introduce this so-called a triad method. To formulate a contradiction, you first identify what a problem is with a known method. Well, for example, let's have a look at the example from business. I come to a company and they tell me, Valerie, well, we have a problem. We cannot uh, deliver our sales plan. I'm asking them, okay, your sales are lower than expected. It's a problem. Now, what is the cause of this effect? Because it's insufficient effect. The, the, the sales are not going as expected. They are lower. And they tell me, well, the cause is rather simple. It is because our sales department is small. Ah, then you know how to solve the problem. Just eliminate the cause. Make your sales department big. But they tell me, no, no, no. We are within the budget. We cannot increase costs. So you see. And in fact, it means that this cost cannot be eliminated or inverted because it produces a positive effect, low costs. And that's where we have a, the same contradiction like in the example with the water. The sales department must be big and the sales department must be small. It's easy to see that if we invert this cause, the sales department is big, then positive and insufficient effects will turn away. The costs will become negative effect because they will rise, but the sales will go as expected. It will be positive effect. But this contradiction, this triad, it actually is a called a, tri a contradiction triad. Well, you can see everywhere such uh, examples of such triads. Again, if I have this bottle, I just took it out of the fridge already half an hour ago, and still I'm a very slow drinker, and the water gets warm because, uh, well, the let's say the bottle, the 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 walls of this bottle are really thin, so they don't delay heat and heat goes inside the bottle. Or actually they are heated and goes uh, heat goes directly, transferred directly to the bottle. But there is a big advantage of it. The bottle has low weight. So you see, again, I have a contradiction. The uh, bottles of the water should be thin, so the bottle is low weight, and the bottles of the water should be thick, so they uh, create isolation but in this case, the bottle will be heavy. Um, but what I already mentioned and what you have already probably noticed, it is not just enough to say that the thin, uh, bottle, uh, the walls of the bottle are thin. And this creates another uh, uh, advantage of RC Plus, that rather than going down deep to search for causes, we are looking for so-called horizontal causes. Uh, all the causes which contribute to create this effect. Because as you realize that if just walls of the bottle are thin, it might be not enough to produce a harmful effect. The water gets warm too quickly. It is just one of the causes, but there is, must be some other conditions. For example, the bottle stands in the air and the air of the room in which I reside is definitely the temperature of this air is definitely higher than the temperature of the water when I was taking this bottle from the fridge. So this is another cause. And again, this cause cannot be eliminated because, well, I don't want to sit in a cold room. It will be highly non-comfortable. But there could be the short cause. And the short cause is that the bottle with water stays outside of the refrigerator. If I just would take it, make a, a swallow and drink something and then put it back to the fridge, then the water in the bottle would not get heated, right? So you see, often, very often, to create a certain negative or insufficient effect, we really need to have not one, not two, but a number of causes which have to act together to create the effect. And the advantage of this method is that basically to solve a problem, like water gets warm too quickly, you see here this circle, red circle. This red circle, it's a logical end. It means that 
each of these three causes is needed to be present to create this effect which well as you can see uh, means that if you want to solve a problem you can also eliminate just one of these causes you don't need to eliminate all of them you need just to eliminate just one of them if the bottle doesn't stay uh, outside of, fri of refrigerator no problem it will be cold if the temperature in the room is not higher than the temperature of the water in the bottle well no problem the water will not get warm it is extremely important and this is a whole concept of rc plus what you see here is basically a very uh, simple a kind of a skeleton rc plus diagram and it has more i'm going to show you what's more in rc plus first of all with rc plus by creating these diagrams we structure problem space we extract causes and effects that create a problem we extract contradictions because we you see we also put positive effect here not only negative effect or negative cause or not not a negative cause just a cause we cannot say if it's positive or negative it's just a cause and these causes you can see produce both positive and negative effect um so we extract contradictions which do not allow causes resulting on undesired effects to be easily eliminated also what is very interesting is that uh, often uh, while uh, making the rc plus analysis and looking at horizontal causes you might discover a cause which you never thought about before which actually in future will give you an excellent resource to solve your problem it helps us to resolve discovering resources that's exactly what i meant with my previous sentence also once you draw an rc plus diagram which each time looks like a tree it very clearly visualizes all the factors and contradictions that creates a problem and also what is important uh, usually we use rc plus uh, by a team so it's not just one person but uh, several persons or several people uh, actually create a diagram uh, where each of um, participants if of team, uh, each of team members have a certain expertise in one or a different uh, or another area so they can actually think of different aspects of a problem uh, and the last one is extremely important because reaching consensus regarding the problem causes and uh, blocking factors um, in my event in my practice I deal with already hundreds of different projects and companies and often they call an external uh, help when they do not manage to uh, solve their challenge themselves uh, well then um, when I come to a company or organization they show me the um, results of their previous work and I often see that people see very see the problem very very differently once we create an RC tree or RC diagram RC plus diagram every member of a team usually agrees with yeah this is a problem this is what we have to do this is very important part of a teamwork and very critical one um, before I go further to show you uh, an example of RC plus and some principles of RC plus uh, I have to say what sorts of problems we are dealing with so this is general problem which is it's top on the top of RCA diagram uh, this is a problem that we usually identify after the first stage of uh, situation analysis this problem can be of four categories first of all this can be an insufficient effect insufficient effect means that we want to have some 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 effect we want to produce something want to do something want to achieve something and yes it happens but mm, not exactly as we wanted uh, the desired goal is achieved but insufficiently ineffectively or inefficiently for either too slow or incompletely or without the desired precision etc 
Well, a very simple case. Uh, well, you go to the museum, you want to see some arts, some piece of art, and there is a beautiful and uh, very interesting exposition. However, you see a long line standing uh, before you get to the uh, museum. Well, standing in the line, is it... Uh, people often will say, well, long time of standing in the queue is, or in line, it is a negative effect. Well, it is not exactly a negative effect. It is an insufficient effect. Because the line is there to organize and prevent, it's a solution already. A line is there to prevent uh, the situation from chaos. But the problem is that the line is moving slowly. But the line is moving. So the, this is a positive effect. So this is a serious difference between uh, insufficient effect and a negative effect. Negative effect is uh, when something happens that you absolutely don't want. For example, you are looking and uh, you are standing in a hall and you're looking at some beautiful piece of art. And suddenly behind your back, someone starts uh, loudly laughing. Well, the question is, how much laughing you would like to have? A little? No, you would like to no laughing at all. That's what you want. So this is the difference between insufficient effect and negative effect. Well, negative effect is when something emerges which is absolutely undesired. Poor control, it's a next category of problems. It is when you um, provide some something with uh, you, you, some control, but you don't have required accuracy or speed or reliability. Well, it's hard to control and so forth. And the final type of a problem. Well, the goal is fully achieved, but it's opposite to insufficient effect. So your uh, goal is fully achieved, but the problem is that you use too much resource for that especially valuable resource. For example, when you paint a wall in your house and you use a liquid paint and a brush, then you definitely use more paint than necessary. And if you do it just in one house, it's one thing. But if you do it on industrial scale, it's a huge loss of a very valuable resource. And often we cannot again apply known solution to neither of these four categories of problems. So we need to go out of the box and create inventive solution. But to identify where to and how to create these inventive solutions, we have to find contradictions. And in this slide, I want to show you the typical RC plus diagram. You can see that it consists first of all from a top problem. This is a problem which we uh, choose from the situation analysis stage and place it here. And um, we create an RCA plus diagram by a top-down decomposition of your problem into the branches by asking questions, what, cause, what is a cause or what causes? Not, a, not asking question why, and I will explain it why in a few moments. So your diagram might consist of several branches connected either with uh, independent relationships, it means that these two branches independently create problems, or branches connected with end relationships, which means that if you eliminate just one uh, chain of which comes to this circle, this problem, or this part, this the whole branch will disappear. So actually it's like one branch which is split to several branches which are connected with end relationship. You also see causes here. What are causes? Uh, causes are mm, answers to the questions, what is a cause, which do not produce any positive effect. There are two of them, like this sort of cause can be changed, and this sort of cause we call non-changeable. Non-changeable means that you cannot influence in any way on this cause. So you stop your analysis once you reach either non-changeable cause or a contradiction cause. What is a contradiction cause? Each time when we present a cause on the RC plus diagram, we ask a question, does this cause produce any positive effect? And if not, well, we move down. If yes, we put this useful effect. If there are several effects, we put most critical one and stop. 
we don't go down we don't explore deeper well in some cases it can be done later but not at this stage why well the answer is very simple like i already mentioned uh searching depths helps us to move to more fundamental causes of problems but if we want to deal with these fundamental causes it is rather difficult because we want to introduce more fundamental changes and it is also known that the closer you are to the problem the more effective and efficient solution will be that's why well the first version of rca plus actually uh, created actually uh, was actually allow it moving down uh, towards uh, deeper causes uh, but then we decided to stop it um, because again the uh, closer you are to the problem the closer your contradiction is to the problem the uh, more ideal solution is going to be so you stop once you reach contradiction cause but what is important you start exploring horizontal causes and uh, especially related with end contradiction you will see it later with an example this is an rca plus legend like i already said there are, might be two kind of relationships or connections between the causes to the effect really and and or and these are uh, sorts of causes factual effect or a cause well factual means that we know for sure that it happens or it is a cause Sometimes it might be assumptive cause. Well, assumptive cause is a sort of hypothesis. Uh, we assume that a cause might be there, but we are not sure. It must be verified. Non-changeable cause. Well, when we hit something that we cannot change under no circumstances. And finally, a cause which causes both positive and negative effect, we call it contradiction cause. And the last component of RCA plus diagram is a positive effect. Well, a positive effect is never a cause, it's always an effect. Just by summarizing a bit, that RC plus is built, uh, RC plus tree, it's always a tree, is built in a top-down manner. A branch or a chain of RC plus tree only stops when it ends with either a contradiction or a non-changeable cause. Each time we bring a cause to the RC plus, we verify it against if it can be changed or if it produces negative effect and final attention finally attention is paid to exploring all possible dependent horizontal causes this is most important in rc plus when do we use rc plus there are three scenarios of using it first when we explore a specific problem occurring in a specific system Second, when we try to analyze a very general problem, for example, we say we want to make all cars safe. So we start, we need to explore all the factors, contradictions, which make a car unsafe. Well, I wouldn't take this problem because it will result in a huge waste of time. And uh, well, I always warn my students, my customers that make RC plus diagram for a specific problem with a specific system otherwise you will go too far and too broad and the final scenario is um, well for instance we have some new idea and we bought we want to build for example a new product and uh, we want to explore uh, potential failures or potential what can cause potential problems so in this case we do a sort of reverse analysis we identify a problem and then try to recreate how to create the problem through so-called subversion approach which was first also developed in trees and now let's have a look at the process with rc plus i'm going to show you an example um, of analyzing a problem and uh, the of course uh, uh, that's a demonstration of the process so some things will be uh, skipped but i hope you will be able to grasp 
how it works and what's the logical order of steps in rsync plus first well let's again think about uh, a problem that uh, we have that i already mentioned have a water with bottle you see i just drank very little and it's already warm because it's warm here in the room well it's not that warm it's 100 percent comfortable for me but still i like to drink cold water i do not like water of the room temperature <laughs> so i have a problem and the problem is definitely a negative effect and i say that the problem is that water in the bottle gets warm too quickly so next i ask question what is the cause of quick heating of water what causes quick heating of water and next is very important uh, you know when you ask question why you might give two types of answers in general first it will be really what is the condition which uh, makes it necessary and second a goal or intention for example you say john goes to the supermarket and if you will ask what causes john to go to the supermarket well usually people will say to buy food uh, sorry why john goes to supermarket that's important why does john go to supermarket people will say to buy food but buying a food is not a real condition that actually um, uh, makes john go to supermarket if you instead of why does john go to supermarket ask what is the cause that john goes to supermarket you will tell it's totally different you will tell there is not enough food at home or there is no food at home you see which is very different so in rca plus we do not focus on goals we focus on real causes goals actually can be brought to rca plus diagrams but as only positive effects and well we also ask never ask uh, never present a cause by a single word word it should always be a complete sentence well here i show the typical uh, types and examples of causes but to save time for this presentation you can have a look at them later or you can freeze the video and uh, read them so let's imagine we moved ahead and said and uh, ask what is the cause of uh, that water in the bottle gets warm too quickly and typical answer would be that well it is because heat is transferred from the room uh, air to water once we identified a cause you see it's not yet color and it's not yet doesn't have yet talk we ask first question are there any positive effect from this cause this question is always asked once you put a cause in your diagram uh, and if you say no you ask next question can we influence this cause which means can we do something about it and if yes we have to identify this cause as a negative cause and to uh, and once it is changeable we said okay we can influence it then we ask uh, are there any other causes or conditions that must act together with this cause defined to produce the effect so you see once we identify that this is a cause and this is not a source of contradiction because there are no positive effects well of course there are people who might say well there is a positive effect because we don't want to drink cold water but in this case i'm an owner of a problem and when i identify a positive answer in the question is there a pos any positive effect well there are always going to be positive effect for someone but we only restrict ourselves to positive effects from the point of view of problem say case let's say stakeholders or owners for example if you're windows glass breaks well if you're an owner of a house and someone asks you is there any positive effect from the broken window you will definitely say of course not but a glass manufacturer will have a different opinion because he can deliver you a new glass and you will pay for it and it's very positive effect for him so in this case the glass manufacturer is not a part of our problem he's outside that's why we always say there is no positive effect but again once we put a cause we always look at the parallel horizontal causes 
and we say yes there is a cause now now actually the trick is how you uh, look at the uh, necessary conditions other causes is that you try to think how to create a negative effect or undesired effect which is an effect here well I say that well I think in that if I would have a lot of water in the bottle it would definitely take more time to make it cold uh, to make it warm so I say that it's because volume of water is too low and again we ask a question is there any positive effect out of it and yes there is because the bottle is compact so I can carry it with you it's a small it's a lightweight it's nice so bottle is compact is well a positive effect for me I'm a problem owner so and that's why I put this positive effect here and I tag this cause as a plus minus which means a contradiction cause or a cause of a contradiction and I stop I do not go deeper I do not ask question what is the cause of volume of water is too low because the answer is already here um, next since I have an uh, open branch this branch is open because it's just one minus I start asking question what is the cause and the answer would be that walls of the bottle are heated too fast well again there is nothing good out of it so we should also check for positive causes uh, for um, dependent causes other any conditions so which again heat is transfer what is needed to transfer heat from the room to water it's just walls of the bottle are heated too fast yeah but he they also transfer heat so must be uh, establishing a thermodynamic equilibrium well again we ask a question is there any positive effect out of it no and uh, the question uh, can we change it well no <laughs> it is uh, a law of physics so we put double minus and also stop this chain but this chain is open so we're going further what is the cause and next we have a whole bunch of uh, causes four of them which must all act together to hit the walls of the battle too fast First of all, well, it's obvious. Temperature of the air in the room is higher than the temperature of the walls. It's a contradiction source. The walls of the bottle are in direct open with air. Well, bottle is easy to reach. The walls of the bottle do not isolate properly from heat. Nothing good out of it. And the bottle stays outside of the refrigerator. Well, for us, there is nothing good out of it. So we go further. And explore these two chains because they are open and we come to the final RC plus diagram uh, first of all we say that a bottle stays outside of the refrigerator it is because either you see you see the difference here you have two arrows going to the cause independently and here in this case we have all causes going to the circle which means that these four are dependent causes and these two are independent causes so and the next cause is that well I uh, drink water rather slowly so these two things are not dependent so even if I eliminate this cause um, I uh, drink water fast well if bottle already stayed and I forgot about it uh, on the table for a long time it will be already warm so these are independent causes so what is good about this diagram the good about things about the diagram then now we have all the contradictions listed and this is a cause post effect it's simply copy and paste from the previous slide so what happens here well it's clearly seen that uh, actually all these four contradictions there are five contradictions in total but all these four are connected with each other through and relationships you see which means that it doesn't matter which one of these four contradictions you are going to solve you will solve the entire problem and next we can take this contradiction any out of these four contradictions well definitely I don't want to start solving from this contradiction because if I solve only this contradiction well I still will have uh, this part so usually when you have um, two independent branches or contradictions then 
you have to solve each branch separately. But in case if uh, there are more ants above, then you better move away from this situation, from this uh, part, and start solving a contradiction, uh, which uh, or choosing for solving a contradiction, uh, which actually has ant relationships. So that was an example, well, I would say technical example, and I want to show a small example, only the uh, final RC plus diagram in business. Um, a while ago, I was helping a company which produces some devices uh, for electronic devices for measurement, and they used to sell them for years. But then at a certain moment, they installed a very expensive software because, uh, well, rather than just doing measurements, the software also were able to produce for future forecasts. And the company was sure that um, market will really uh, value this device and will pay for it. But since the price was rather high, comparing to the previous generations of device, the sales plan, the sales plan was only uh, executed by 70%. So they, we also, since I was doing several uh, projects already at this company, we decided to put this business problem to RCA Plus. And that was a final diagram. Well, it's a fragment, the real one was bigger. So the sales plan was not realized because sales volume was low. Customers were not willing to upgrade new device. And they were not willing because uh, they had negative reaction of customers toward higher price. As you see, out of these three causes, there are no positive effects, so we went further, and we identified three causes of a negative reaction of the customers. First, in the past, customers only paid for hardware, so now they don't understand why they have to pay so much uh, for, 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 for the software, because they still value the hardware more than software. So the customers do not see why the price has increased so much. And finally, of course, high price of the package. It's one of the three conditions that has to uh, use to cause negative reaction. And then customers don't see why the price have increased uh, because of two causes. First, well, the software interface looks too simple. Well, this is again a contradiction. On one hand, the engineers of a company uh, did all their best to uh, create a simple interface, but it caused an opposite reaction. Well, that's it, too simple. Why shall we pay so much money? And another cause was that the value of software, which actually was not explained properly to the customers. And it happened because there were no attention paid to the customer value chain. And finally, it was produced by the CEO of the company who established this company based on his patents. Uh, he was an excellent engineer, but at a certain moment, when competition had grown, uh, the company was not paying much attention to business issues, focusing rather on technical excellence. So what is interesting about this diagram? First of all, I would say that, again, that it's just a fragment, that if you look at all these three contradictions or contradiction causes, it doesn't matter which one to choose. But, it, well, it's logical that uh, rather than dealing with CEO of the company, we better think something about a high price of the package. And there are ways to deal with that situation. For example, to create monthly plans. So in total, they will pay the same price, the customers, but well, each month will be rather low payment. Now, there were more solutions, rather also combining the uh, an analytical, combining the device with a consultant service where people or engineers of a company or analysts of our company could basically uh, collect the data from the customers and create analysis that would also justify a higher price. But I'm already talking about solutions. Before that, I just uh, want to say that there were more um, contradictions at a factual uh, diagram but I want to say that it really helps not just to understand the problem, but also find a place where you're going to solve your problem. Especially, it is important with these horizontal connections and horizontal contradictions. Um, well, I just uh, don't want to focus on this in this presentation because it's more about RC Plus itself. 
rather than how to select contradictions and how to solve them. That's require a different presentation. Just want to mention that there could be uh, several situations with contradictions, like a root contradiction, a dependent contradiction, independent contradiction, and a mixed situation. Um, you can again look at this if you uh, download the presentation. Um, I'm already approaching the end of uh, the presentation, so I want to mention a few words about organizational issues. Usually the ERC Plus is completed by a team where the members have different uh, uh, functional experience and might have a look at from different points of view on a problem. Often the lead customers are invited if we're talking about some uh, manufacturing or production company. Usually it is, uh, well, the average time of making RC Plus is from one to till four hours. But I remember one case when we're, uh, there was a little bit complex problem, so we were spending like three days by creating real RCA plus. And it's not that uh, you need too much time to create the first instance of the RCA plus diagram, but creating RCA plus, a, re a proper RCA plus diagram is an iterative process because you always come back, you always look, you always change or update something. So perhaps the first RCA plus diagram we created within two hours, and then we spend two more days by updating it. So in summary, like I mentioned, RC plus is used for problem analysis of different types of problems. It helps us to focus and identify both vertical and horizontal causes. Uh, but it's most important, it's the biggest difference of RC plus from other methods is that it focuses on identification of contradictions or contradiction causes and then we identify contradictions. Uh, the big advantage also of RC plus is a good visualization and uh, for instance if you properly created an RC plus diagram you show it to someone who have no idea about your RC plus process and this diagram is clearly readable and understandable to the outsider. Um, RCA plus extract contradictions uh, in a form that can be directly put to other problem solving tools, especially trace tools. Uh, also first developed for technical systems for engineering. Now we already did a lot of um, work with uh, RCA plus in business management and we also tried some social areas. I'm pretty sure it's going to work well there we just need more examples. But regarding engineering, well, it's been already hundreds of projects where RC Plus has proven its effectiveness. Well, and finally, well, I know the stories when some companies, uh, customers of mine, uh, also RC Plus was trained, was brought as a part of trees. They actually started to use RC Plus outside of trees. Those people in the company which haven't learned trees yet or they, which probably they have, who don't have intention to learn trees, they in fact um, started to use RCA plus for problem analysis without any trees. Well, and uh, I heard good responses, good uh, uh, good words about it. So that's probably all what I wanted to tell you. Mm, I'm afraid a shorter presentation would not show you much, so I try it to be a little bit uh, uh, more detailed than just a normal presentation. Uh, first of all, I would like to express my gratitude to several persons who uh, were helping me to create um, this uh, method. Um, we also can uh, download the uh, RC Plus guide by following this link. And yeah, how to get access to RC Plus. Well, RC Plus is a part of training courses on trees, but also I have online course on RC Plus. Uh, I also provide in-company training on RC Plus, but those who would like to study it individually, there is online course. You can check at uh, www.xtrees.com. Um, in the section training, online training, you will see the link to RC Plus and further details how you can get to it. 
Um, but anyway, if you're interested, you can uh, send us email uh, to info at xtrees.com with your questions and I will be help we because we are a small team now we will be help to we will be happy to help you so that's probably all what I wanted to say today to tell today well thank you very much bye <laughs>